Well, hello, friends. Welcome to the Serenity OS update for May 2020. Um, before we begin, let me tell you about sponsorship. So the Serenity operating system and all of my content about it is always going to be free and open source. But if you would like to support my work and maybe one day make it possible for me to do this work full time, then there are three donation options. So I'm on GitHub Sponsors and Patreon uh, for those interested in making a monthly recurring donation. And I'm also on PayPal uh, if you're interested in making a one-time donation. And you can find links to all of these things in the video description below. And of course, a gigantic thank you to everybody who is already supporting me in some way. Uh, the support I'm getting on this project is absolutely mind-blowing to me. Um, more and more people keep joining and I, I'm just so grateful and um, this is really magical for me. So thank you everybody. Um, anyway, let's, let's talk about May. So uh, I've continued doing a lot of work on the browser this month. So let's bring that up here. And um, one thing that's new is that we now have HTTPS, uh, which was uh, thanks to a lot of hard work by Ali and Itamar and uh, DexSTTP, uh, among others, who worked on uh, bringing up the TLS and crypto, big int, stuff like that, and uh, all of that coming together so that we can now load websites encrypted. Uh, and it's still very immature and young code, but it's really awesome that we can go to google.com and actually load the site. And I think we can even search here. Let's search for Serenity OS. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit tricky to, to get things working and it's a bit unstable, but you can clearly see that we load some semblance of search results here. Uh, and all of this is going into uh, a new HTML parser that I've started building this month. So um, it's based on the HTML specification. So it tries to stick extremely um, closely to what the spec says we should be doing. And that's that's how we're gonna get an actually uh, good browser out of this whole thing. So we're moving away from ad hoc parsing and into spec compliant parsing. So here is the um, HTML specification uh, parsed by the new parser. So as you can see, it's it's loading um, loading this quite well. Um, but obviously there's a million CSS bugs and JavaScript things and all kinds of stuff that we need to fix. But it's still it's still awesome that we're we're making good progress here. And then uh, there have been various little engine improvements outside of the parser and the and the big TLS um, HTTPS thing. So we got a bunch of patches from Shadow Facts and from uh, Linus has been doing a bunch of uh, libweb stuff and a bunch of people contributing to the browser in, in various ways. And another thing that's really cool is that, uh, let's see, let's go to the Serenity website. So now I can bring up a JavaScript console. So this was added by Hunter. Um, and we can actually type here document and query selector and we can get all of the anchors uh, and then we can even loop over them um, i don't know i'm not super strong at writing javascript on the fly but maybe we can do something like console log a dot get attribute href nope i messed that up uh needs to be query selector all course. Yeah. So we can now run JavaScript interactively against the um, JavaScript execution environment in the page. So this is super, super useful for debugging. And uh, it even has syntax highlighting and stuff. <laughs> so it's really cool. So thanks, uh, Hunter and everybody who have worked on that. Um, and then another cool thing is we now have support for the Gemini protocol, which was implemented by uh, Conrad. And it's a new internet protocol, which is supposed to be sort of a um, very lightweight protocol with heavy focus on uh, privacy and simplicity. And I find that kind of, I don't know, it, it just seemed to fit pretty well with the Serenity um, system. So. Uh, we went for it, and then Ali went and did a markup parser for it. 
So now we can render these pages in the Serenity browser. That's pretty cool, I think. There are not that many Gemini clients yet, but we are um, one such client. So I'm um, very happy with that. And let's see, what's something else? Another thing is we now have file download. So if I download this file, you can see that it now downloads. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we can open it in the folder. And it brings us right here to the folder. Um, not super much to say about that. It's just cool to have downloads. And let's take a look at the JavaScript engine. So uh, the JS engine continues to develop at a ridiculous pace. So now if we go and run our test suite, by the way, check out what happens down here in the taskbar when I run the test suite. It's showing the test suite progress in the taskbar. How cool is that? I really love that <laughs> feature. <laughs> it's so nifty. Uh, and, and actually, it happened while we were downloading um, downloading in the browser as well. So this is something I added um, just yesterday. And I love it so much. It's so freaking cool. Um, and it's it's an escape sequence that you can, you can emit. And that allows any terminal command to um, to do this. So we could actually do this with um, the pro command, which is sort of our wget or curl command. So if we get that thing, send it to devnull, you can see it doing it for downloads as well. Love it. <laughs> anyway. Um, oh, and since we're in the terminal, let me show you some neat stuff here. So now uh, you'll notice that we have hyperlinks in the terminal. So these are actually clickable now. So we can click on throw basic and it brings up that test in the editor. Uh, and this is something I find super nifty. So, oops, I don't know what happened there. Uh, we still have bugs apparently. So, oh, hello. Okay, yeah, the um, keyboard is a little wonky in my QEMO here today, but not to worry. So um, yeah, so these things are all clickable. We can click on downloads and it opens it in the file manager. And we can click on text files and they come up in the text editor and so on. And actually, if you right click, you can even see that this one will open in file manager. Um, oops, and this one will open in text editor and so on. And if you don't like uh, that things open when you click on them. If you hold shift, then you can actually select like normal. So um, you can opt out of it by holding shift. But I am super in love with this feature. So, <laughs> um, And another cool thing is actually that um, these things are draggable. So if I have a file here like welcome HTML, I can actually drag it from the terminal to the file manager. How cool is that? <laughs> Anyway, um, so I think that's pretty cool. And then, um, then, 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 then I worked on the painting app, which is now called Pixel Paint. So uh, it now has, it's still very much a work in progress, but it now has layers. So um, these are layers that move around independently and um, we can draw into one, but it doesn't, uh, draw outside of it, and they can be uh, rearranged as you like, and um, move to front. Yeah, you get the idea. Uh, so it's been it's been really interesting to to take the um, Pixel Paint program and, and go from being like this very simplistic sort of Microsoft Paint like thing and um, switching gears and heading more in a in more of a Photoshopy, gimpy direction. So that's that's ongoing work, but I think it's it's really interesting and it's it's not at all like a strong area for me. So I get to learn a lot by doing it. Um, and yeah, so that's that's been happening. And then let's see. Oh, dude, I gotta show you in Hack Studio. So let's bring that up. So here is apparently a little test program, uh, but the thing I want to show you is in the debugger. So um, let's set a breakpoint somewhere, wherever, really, doesn't matter. Oops, I have to build first. Um, 
Okay, it built the second time. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so now I have started to debug and we have uh, stopped the program here on this line. And now we can see down here, this is our uh, stack frame and we can actually look at local variables in the stopped program that we're running. So here is uh, X. I guess this is this struct right here has an X in it, so we can go here and edit the value. So we can change the values of stopped programs in the debugger. This is pretty cool. Uh, and this is the debugger stuff was made by Itamar. And then uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, uh, Hunter went and added the support for changing values in a running program or in a paused program. So. Uh, these guys are working on the debugging stuff, uh, and we get to see all the cool things happening. So, very awesome. Thank you guys for working on that. Um, and let's see what else. So, oh, right. So another interesting thing, if we bring up Font Editor. So uh, Hussein has uh, worked on the font format and expanded it so we can support uh, more characters. So this is the... I guess the, the sort of uh, languages that collide with the people who were working on it. So <laughs> I guess Turkish, Swedish, and German so far. Um, we've just been adding symbols here so we can see some more um, localized content on the web as the browser develops. And uh, this is super, super good work by uh, Hussein and uh, Linus adding all the glyphs and stuff and making them look consistent uh, with the system font. Very good. Cool stuff. <laughs> and um, and yeah, the, the font editor has actually been updated a little bit as well, so now it's, um, it doesn't fall apart when you load a bigger font. So if we load up one of our larger fonts, it actually just grows the window and now you can inspect this font as well. Previously this was not possible without resorting to uh, C++ programming. Uh, so this is really nice. Now we can actually inspect our bigger fonts. Anyway, um, then, oh, something else that's cool is uh, Sergey has added a clipboard history applet up here. So if I click on this thing, it brings up this window. And if I just copy something, uh, I thought that it would show up. Oh. Oh, right, this was not the right thing. I was choosing copy here. Uh, copy URL, then you can see it popping up here, the URL that I copied. And if I copy some text, it shows up here. And you can actually double click on these guys if you want to sort of recall an earlier thing. So if I double click on something here, then that becomes uh, what's now copied. So this is really, really cool and useful thing by Sergey. So thanks for working on that. And speaking of the clipboard, actually, if I bring up the system monitor, we can see that the um, clipboard is now running in a uh, separate program uh, using a unprivileged user account called clipboard. So uh, when you do uh, when you put anything on the clipboard, then it actually goes into a separate process, uh, and then that process is only responsible for holding on to the clipboard and uh, basically, uh, everybody has to talk to the clipboard program if they want to interac interact with clipboards, and it removes this point of interaction between random programs. Um, and previously, all of the clipboard was stored in the Windows Server, so now Windows Server has one less responsibility, so that's really good. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so all these, all these random things that have been happening, but they're all really cool. And another thing that's been going on in the, um, uh, 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 in the terminal area is uh, emojis. So if you notice here we have emoji.txt, we now support emojis in the terminal. And um, really what we support is arbitrary uh, Unicode code points. So these are just a UTF-8 text file. And the terminal now parses UTF-8 input correctly and turns it into um, the right glyph, if we have a glyph. And if I open this in the text editor, of course, it comes up in the text editor as well. So 
uh, both Terminal and Text Editor have received um, Unicode support this month. And if you wanted to input an emoji, what you do is you press Control Alt Space, and then it brings up this little emoji selector. So we can choose, um, I don't know, which one should we pick? How about the heart? Pretty nice. Uh, and this works also in the terminal heart. Um, and I think I think that it feels really natural to use it that way. So I'm, I'm very happy with the feature so far. Um, so let's see what else. What else? What else? Um, I guess I can show you that. Oh, here's a random thing. These um, text boxes like this one, they used to be uh, fixed with font uh, because we didn't support text boxes with variable width fonts, but now this is actually um, variable width font instead, which I think looks so much nicer. Uh, and it's it's subtle, and um, but if, if you were used to the fixed width font, then this is just so much nicer, I think. And... Um, and then, then there has been a whole bunch of um, documentation being written. Uh, shout outs to Sergey, who is super diligent about adding documentation. Um, we should all be <laughs> we should all be better at that. But Sergey is just uh, making us all uh, look bad, and we should get better about writing documentation. Uh, here's an example. Or um, all original, of course. And it's really nice to see the documentation coming in. And this is all written in Markdown, which is our native documentation format. And then um, we just turn it into HTML and show it here in a uh, HTML view. Very, very nifty. Um, and then some other little things. Uh, this month I worked on uh, some hardware support, so I added support for five button mouse, but now I actually don't have that plugged in, so <laughs> I can't show it to you. But um, but that's something that we support now, and um, and there hasn't there hasn't been that much kernel work happening lately. It's been been pretty heavy focus in user space, but. Um, but there's, it's just been, it's just been a really nice month, and a lot of people helping out, and it's been a really good vibe. Especially in these weird times when things are weird outside, it's nice to have something uh, like this inside that we can all enjoy. So I think this was everything I wanted to show you today. So thank you very much for checking in and catching up. Uh, and if you ever want to chat with us, then you can find us on IRC in the Serenity OS channel on Freenode. Um, but yeah, thanks for, for checking it out, and I'll see you next time.